Welcome to Daily Overdose. I don't care what the adversity has been. You have two choices. You can be unforgiving, bitter, angry, upset, and be a carrier of grief, or you can choose resilience. You can cope with what happened. You can upload the program of resilience and recover all and get back to the place where you were before the fall. Stop waiting for the storm to pass and ask yourself the question, what can I accomplish in the rain? What can I accomplish in the rain? Who can I become in the rain? There are people all over the world who are depending on you. So our wounds become wisdom. We have a new program. It's called resiliency. The race is not given to the strong nor the swift, but it is given to he that endureth until the end. Life doesn't get any easier. It doesn't get more forgiving. We just get stronger and we get more resilient. One thing we know is that adversity, conflict, trauma does not discriminate. We are all acquainted with pain. I don't care how many times life knocks you down, get back up and tell life, I'm supposed to be here. I belong here. Give me what's mine. When we tackle obstacles, when we face adversity and conflict, it is only then that we find hidden reserves of courage and resilience we didn't even know we had. It's literally only when we face failure that we realize these resources are always there within us. We only need to find them to fulfill our destinies. After life has beaten you and broken you into pieces, resiliency is that gift and ability it's the discipline to turn those pieces into a work of art. Many of you listening to me know what it's like to lose everything. You know what it's like to hit rock bottom. You know what it's like not to be supported. You know what it's like to be lied on. You know what it's like to experience emotional, relational, and psychological trauma. And it changes you. Because you don't know what you are made of until you have gone through something. You already know what failure feels like. You already know what it feels like to quit, to stop, to throw in the towel, to sit on the couch, to move to a substance, to put your confidence in some man or some woman, to lay idle. But do you know what it's like to give everything that you have and push? and persevere if you're going to understand the program of resiliency we are going to have to stop running from difficult times stop praying that the storm will pass over you and pray to grow through the storm stop going around it go through it what you go through you will grow through some fights are not won in the first round Flat out, the moment that you get that and you get crystal clear and you accept the fact that there are some giants that you will not defeat in the first round. You need endurance. You need stamina to reach some goals. You're not going to hit the million with the first investment. You're not going to hit the home run always at first swing. But resiliency says, I belong here and I deserve another shot. I want my opportunity. Give me my opportunity. It's your reaction to adversity, not adversity itself, that determines how your life story will develop. Rock bottom is the solid foundation to build the future. And you've lost everything. You have everything you need. Resiliency says, I tried and I failed. Resiliency has its own mentality. The program of resiliency says, I tried and I failed, I tried and I failed, I tried and I failed, I tried and I failed again. I'm going to start again, and I'm not waiting till Monday. I'm going to start right now. I tried again and again, and I succeeded. 
See, what a lot of people don't know is that the movie, The Matrix, is, is more of a documentary than it is a movie. See, anytime Neo needed to accomplish something, they would just simply upload the program. If he needed to know Taekwondo, if he needed to know karate, if he needed to speak a different language, he would literally just upload the program to Neo's consciousness. Well, life works the same. There is a program. We all run programs. And it doesn't matter if you're at the county fair, it doesn't matter if you're at the family cookout, it doesn't matter if you're at home watching a movie in the basement or on vacation with your, your wife or your husband. We're all running a program. And you have default settings within your subconscious. And we have many of us deal with laziness. Many of us deal with anger. Many of us deal with frustration. And these are different programs that we run. And so now you need to deliberately investigate and examine your internal man and ask yourself, what are the programs I'm running? Because for many of us, laziness is a program. Procrastination is a program. Anger and anguish and bitterness and unforgiveness is a program. And if you're gonna hang on to grief and anger and unforgiveness because of the lawsuit or because of the jail time or because of the record that you think somebody messed up or the messy divorce you are going through or the job you lost or the business that tanked, I don't care what the adversity has been, you have two choices. You can be unforgiving, bitter, angry, upset, and be a carrier of grief, or you can choose resilience. You can cope with what happened. You can upload the program of resilience and recover all and get back to the place where you were before the fall. Get up! Stop waiting for the storm to pass and ask yourself the question, what can I accomplish in the rain? What can I accomplish in the rain? Who can I become in the rain? What can I build under these conditions? Resilience is based on compassion for ourselves as well as compassion for others. The future is hinged on your resiliency. Your family is depending on you to put in the work. Your friends, your circles of influence, your mentors, there are people all of the world who are depending on you. So our wounds become wisdom because our perspective, we have a new program. It's called resiliency. So are you willing to lose sleep? Are you willing to put the work in? Are you fully persuaded? Are you determined? I don't care how many times life knocks you down. Get back up and tell life, I'm supposed to be here. I belong here. Give me what's mine. When we tackle obstacles, when we face adversity and conflict, it is only then that we find hidden reserves of courage and resilience we didn't even know we had. It's literally only when we face failure that we realize these resources are always there within us. We only need to find them to fulfill our destinies. After life has beaten you and broken you into pieces, resiliency is that gift and ability. It's the discipline to turn those pieces into a work of art. When we tackle obstacles, when we face adversity and conflict, it is only then that we find hidden reserves of courage and resilience we didn't even know we had. The future is hinged on your resiliency. So our wounds become wisdom because our perspective, we have a new program. It's called resiliency. What can I accomplish in the rain? Who can I become in the rain? What can I build? Under these conditions, resilience is based on compassion for ourselves as well as compassion for others. So I need you to realize that there will be bad days. 
there will be times that you feel like you have no earthly idea what your teacher or professor is talking about. But what you will never, ever do is throw a pity party. What you will never, ever do is tap out. What you will never, ever do is concede and throw in the towel. And if everything you listen to goes over your head, you are going to miss your moment and stay living in the midst of the madness. The madness of impossibility, the lie. Somebody lied to you and told you that it was impossible. Because understanding the power and the difference between what is impossible and what is possible, it all comes back to your perspective and your capacity. See, your life is one big sum average of the thoughts that you consistently hold in your mind. Your actions, your outcomes, your life is just one great mirror reflecting back to the world what you're thinking on the inside. All of the pain, all of the trauma, everything you have experienced, the turbulence, you have to garner up all of that hunger. I'm talking about you gotta think of everything you've ever wanted in your life, and you gotta put it toward that goal. And there are things that you have been called to do that no one on earth has ever done. So I know what pain feels like. I know what disappointment looks like. And I don't like the look. I'm coming back for everything they told me I wanted. I'm going to show the world that whatever is broke can truly be fixed. I'm going to be great and better than anything you've ever seen. Make a commitment to pay the price for change. American dramatist and screenwriter Sidney Howard remarked, One half of knowing what you want is knowing what you must give up before you get it. Change always costs you something, if not monetarily, then in time, energy, and creativity. In fact, if change doesn't cost you anything, then it isn't real change. As you consider how to make the changes needed to improve and grow, it is important to measure the cost of change compared to the cost of the status quo. You have to do your homework. That often makes the difference between change equals growth and change equals grief. What will the changes you desire really cost you? Management expert Tom Peters gives a perspective on this. He suggests, don't rock the boat, sink it, and start over. If you desire to be creative and do something really innovative, that's sometimes what it takes. You must destroy the old to create something new. You cannot allow yourself to be paralyzed by the idea of change. Four, change must happen within you before it can happen around you. I love the Peanuts comic strip by Charles Schultz, in which Lucy says to Charlie Brown, I would like to change the world. Where would you start, Charlie Brown asks her. Lucy's simple reply, I would start with you. I hate to say it, but our attitude is probably a lot more like Lucy's than we would want to admit. If we don't like something, we desire change for everyone other than us. We are resistant to change. Novelist Francis Hudson Burnett wrote, at first people refuse to believe that a strange new thing can be done, and then they begin to hope it can be done. Then they see it can be done. Then it is done, and all the world wonders why it was not done centuries ago. Artist Andy Warhol observed, they always say that time changes things, but you actually have to change them yourself. The truth is that any change that occurs in the world always begins first with change within an individual. That's why playwright George Bernard Shaw said, progress is impossible without change, and those who cannot change their minds cannot change anything. 
the good news is that once you dedicate yourself to growth and develop a lifestyle of planned improvement from the inside out, it becomes normal to you. And you notice when you're not making the progress you have come to expect. It is said that pianist Arthur Rubinstein refused to listen to recordings made of songs he had played. Even only a few months after he completed them, he was dissatisfied with the play he heard. Why? Because he had grown and changed, but the recordings had not. <laughs>